Hello, I'm Alex Hamer, and in today's video, we're continuing to explore the new cloud tools released for Houdini 20. Previously, we looked at how to create some different cloudscapes with the new Skybox node, but now we want to look at all of the other tools available to us within the cloud section. What I'd like to demonstrate is the majority of these new tools to create a single cloud object, and we can break down all of the new nodes into three main categories. Firstly, we have shape makers. These tools help you to create the initial cloud shape or to add some variation and secondary shapes. Essentially, these tools are modeling operations. Secondly, we have some noise functions, which allow us to add some wispy and billowy noise. Finally, the third category is adjustment nodes. These allow us to make some adjustments to how the cloud appears, like its density profile, for example. The process for using these nodes isn't restricted. You don't need to go in this order, but likely you'll start with the modeling tools, then move on to a mix of adjustment and noise functions. So let's try and create a cloud using these new features. This project file will also be available to download via the Project Pegasus page or the SideFX content library if you'd rather look at this directly. Within my scene, I just want to set up a simple skylight so our clouds look nice instead of a unlit-esque fashion. Once that's done, I can head inside of the geometry context and let's name our node as well. Now to create cloud shapes, we enter our tab menu in the network view and navigate to environments, then into clouds. And you can see we have a wide range of options available to us. But of course, as mentioned earlier, we just want to form the initial shape of our clouds, which are these highlighted ones. The main nodes that I want to point out are cloud shape generate, cloud shape from intersection, and cloud shape from polygon. There are some other ones as well, but they generally have pretty obvious functions and you are likely to use these more in specialized circumstances. More information on these will be on the Houdini 20 documentation. Now, let me start out with Cloud Shape Generate, which essentially procedurally creates base shapes for us to play around with. Alternatively, we can create these sphere primitives from a polygon mesh by taking a polygon mesh and inputting it into the cloud shape from polygons. But for now, let's head back to Cloud Shape Generate. I can choose different cloud species, and to be honest, with this node, there isn't a whole lot to explain. It's not super complicated. It's super easy to play around with, and I think you'll find the best way of learning it is to just mess around with it. For the tutorial though, I'm just going to stick with Mediocris. You can see that we have control over lots of different values, such as initial size, length and width, the distortion effect applied to the cloud, whether we want to flatten the bottom. We also have the option to scale the noise applied to the sphere primitives that get created, or how many iterations of secondary shapes we apply to add more variation. Now that we've chosen a shape I'm happy with, we have our starting point. I noticed though that these shapes don't seem to blend into each other that well, and there are some harsh edges which doesn't appeal to me too much right now. So we can use this utility called Cloud Shapes from Intersection, which finds the intersections between these sphere primitives and adds some more spheres around them. Once we create this, you'll see that this isn't the exact result we were expecting. So to fix this, you just need to tell it to keep the input geometry under output and this is a much more approachable look. I'll just add some size and noise variation on this to make it less uniform. Now that we have our cloud shape, we want to turn this into a volume that we can then manipulate with noise. Since Houdini 20, this process has changed. Before, in previous versions of Houdini, we simply needed to create the cloud node, which allowed us to turn any shape into a cloud, and then we could have added some secondary shapes and some variation. However, since we now have some extremely powerful shape creation tools, we don't need this functionality anymore, and it's a much simpler process. So let me show you the new way we create clouds from shapes now. We create a VDB from particles node and connect it to our cloud shape. You can see that this doesn't instantly create the result we want, doesn't look like a cloud at all, but at the top, we can see that we don't want to sample our distance. We want to sample the fog VDB. And once we enable this, we have our volume in the shape of our cloud. This is also where you can increase the resolution of your volume if you want sharper results, which you can do by lowering the voxel size, similar to the Skybox node. Next, we can move on to the other range of utilities available to us, which are noise functions and adjustment nodes. You may notice, if you've had some experience with clouds in Houdini previously, that we still have access to the cloud noise node, which just provides some basic sparse convolution noise. However, with this major update to Houdini, we gain access to two new powerful types of noise. 
billowy noise, which provides that typical cloud look of billowing puffs, with some nice options for adding minor details such as advection. And then we have wispy noise, which creates another recognizable look of that wispy cotton ball effect. Firstly though, I'm not really happy with the bumpiness pattern on the bottom due to all of the smaller sphere primitives, and I want to clip the bottom of the cloud to break it up slightly. So I'm going to use what I've designated as an adjustment node, even though it's kind of a modeling node, cloud clip. Once I add this, I can dig into the bottom of the cloud slightly, and then add some noise displacement by enabling it to break up this clipping and add some nice realistic variation instead of an unrealistic, perfectly flat base. So now I want to utilize the new noises to add some billowy noise to create that puffy effect. So if I create and add a billowy noise node, I firstly want to adjust some noise settings to make them puff out a bit more and to add some warly details. Then if I wanted to add some advection, which is basically where warm air moves into areas of cooler air, I can just enable this, which you can see adds some more variation. This is an okay effect, but we still have some big clumps as you can see. So what I want to do, instead of scaling down the noise, I want to add additional iterations of noise with the same effect. I can do that firstly by heading to processing and increasing the number of noises from 1 to 2. And then I can turn on my iterations and set the value to 3 if it isn't already. There is the option to add more, but to me this already looks pretty detailed and I'm quite happy with this look. Next, I want to add a bit of wispy noise, which creates that cotton ball look which you often see. Although I still want to keep this flat bottom profile, but I want to use the wispiness to break up the bottom of the cloud to keep the billowy top. So if I create a wispy noise node, you can see immediately that things get a bit messy, as the wispy noise is affecting the entire cloud. Again, as I mentioned, I just want to apply this noise to the bottom. To do this, I navigate to the velocity category, and heading to the scale by bounding box, I want to increase the minimum value so that we start to cut off from the bottom. While I'm here, I also want to add a bit of wind, and increase the speed slightly, just to make things feel a bit less static. I can then mess around with some of the amplitude and scale settings to affect how the noise looks. Maybe I want to increase the amplitude to make things spread out more, or increase the scale of the noise pattern to make it less dense. And this is a look I'm happy with. You can see if I clear things up a bit that I still maintain that bottom profile, but also break it up with this new wispy noise, which provides a really nice looking effect. Finally, I have noticed a sort of fade around the edges, which relates to our density profile. If I were to adjust this, I would create a Cloud Density Profile Adjustment node. And here we can see a gradient that represents the slice of our cloud. If I wanted the edges to have a harsher cutoff, I would enable modification of the edge density and increase the value. This node has a lot of options, which you can play around with to produce some really interesting, although not necessarily realistic, looking results. If you don't feel like you need to adjust the density profile, you can just delete this node and not worry about it. Now we have our final cloud, which I can then increase the resolution by decreasing the voxel size in my VDB node to see how it looks in a much higher quality. Cool, we now have a cloud which was made using nearly all of the new cloud tools. There were some nodes that I didn't cover which I would like to highlight. Firstly, cloud noise, which again I think I mentioned earlier was previously in Houdini 19 and doesn't provide the same control as the other noise types, and cloud light which just allows the addition of lights within the cloud volume. If you're looking to export these clouds as a VDB for an external program like Unreal Engine, it's very straightforward. I covered the method of how to do this in the previous videos within the series, but as I mentioned then, the process is practically identical. We simply drag out from the node with our clouds in it, and we create a node called Convert VDB. Then within this node, we just want to change a few settings around. We want to change convert2 from volume to VDB, which will change our Houdini volume into a VDB format which can be used by external programs that support it. And we don't need to worry about the VDB class, so let's leave that. Then, just to make things simpler, I don't want to export any fancy stuff, just the density, so I'll change my VDB type to float and set the precision to 32-bit. I also don't need to prune the tolerance. These settings can be changed for your needs and there is documentation online for how to use this node in a more fine controlled way. Again, remember that the voxel size, aka the resolution, correlates directly to the quality of the cloud VDB, 
and therefore the file size that gets exported. So you may need to adjust this value slightly for your needs. Then let's create a file cache node. This is what we'll use to export the clouds out of Houdini. Again, we don't need to tweak anything major as there's a lot of complicated options, just some small aspects. Firstly, I'd like to enable the load from disk at the top. This means that when we hit the render button, if we already have a skybox or cloud volume rendered in our scene with the blue tag, it will use what it has from that instead of recalculating the whole tree of nodes again when we click the button. So this just saves a bit of time if you're exporting lots of variations. We can also set our name and select a folder. It's important also that the file type is set here, you must select VDB. Then we don't need a sequence, so we can change the evaluation range from frame range to single frame. And that's how we export VDBs from Houdini. If I hop into the Project Pegasus environment within Unreal, I can use a tool that I created specifically for this project to use this VDB file that I created in Houdini to drag this cloud around as an object within the volumetric cloud system. Looks great. Again, this project file will be available to download from the Project Pegasus site on side effects, and a link should be in the description. But there'll also be some more cloud examples in the side effects content library when Houdini 20 launches. I hope this video helps you learn how to explore these new capabilities. Thank you for watching.